On the corner of a large lot in Vancouver's busy West End stands a small wooden house. Known as the Rody House, it stands, as it has stood for over 100 years, as a reminder of different times, as part of our heritage from the days when Vancouver was young. The Rody House was built in 1892 when the city of Vancouver was barely 30 years old. 30 years before this house was built, what we know as the city of Vancouver consisted of the scattered settlements of its original inhabitants, the First Nations people, and vast areas of virgin forest. Even in 1892, when construction on the house was started, Vancouver was very different than it is today. Today there are nearly half a million people living in Vancouver, and the West End is one of the city's most densely populated areas. In 1890, Vancouver had only 15,000 inhabitants, and the West End, where the Rody House is situated, was just becoming a popular place for well-to-do white businessmen and their families to live. Many of the major roads that we are familiar with today were in place then, but they looked very different. Downtown Granville Street had considerably fewer stores. And farther along Granville Street, in what is now Carisdale, there were no stores at all. Even though much of the city looked very different then, there were similarities too. English Bay, where lifeguard Joe Fortes presided, was even then a popular recreational area. Like today, these were years of rapid growth for the small city of Vancouver. Public transportation was a major issue. The downtown area was already heavily built up, and a steady stream of immigrants from all over the world was coming to Vancouver building homes and making new lives for themselves and their families. The Rodies were one such family. Originally from Europe, Gustav and Matilda had met and started a family in the United States before coming to Vancouver, where they would found the city's first bookbinding business. Vancouver was a very young city when, when Grandfather arrived. It didn't have a printer or bookbinder to uh, print menus for restaurants or uh, books that people would read and uh, grandfather brought these talents uh, and set up the first firm. The firm that Gustav would set up would become well known for the quality of work it produced. Like many immigrants, Gustav was a highly trained professional. He was both a skilled craftsman and a talented artisan. The skills and talents he brought with him to his new country would be valuable assets to the rapidly growing community of Vancouver. When I visit the house and look at the things that my great-grandfather made and recognize his talents, I really think of the richness that immigrants bring. They bring talents, they bring skills, they are artists, and uh, they do that today as they did it a hundred years ago when great-grandfather came to Vancouver. The house that Gustav and Matilda Rody would build was very much a reflection of the times in which it was built and the people that it was built for. Because of its importance as a reflection of those times, the house underwent a complete restoration in the 1980s, and the Rody House Society was formed to preserve and show the house as part of Vancouver's heritage. The architect, or the person who designed the house, was Francis Rattenbury, who later went on to design many of the province's most famous buildings. The Rody House was built in the Queen Anne style. Elements of this style include a complex roof line, dormer windows, bay windows, and a large veranda or porch. Rattenbury also included many things that reflected his own tastes, the city around the house, and the needs of the family who would live there. The turret, for example, was built so that Matilda Rody, who is from Heligoland, which is a small island off the coast of Denmark, could see the ocean whenever she wished. The extensive use of wood, both inside and outside the house as a major building material, reflects the fact that Vancouver was surrounded by forests. Top quality lumber was both cheap and available. The fine detailing throughout was affordable in an era when nearly everything was done by hand. 
The state of the house now is very nearly as it was at the turn of the century when the roadies lived in it. Looking around the house is the closest we can come to seeing how people then lived. Just as the city around the house was both similar and yet very different from the city we live in now, so too is the house both similar and yet very different from houses that we live in today. These similarities and differences can give us important clues to the lives of the people who lived there and how those lives were both like and unlike our own. Because people did live here, the objects in the house aren't just decorations or antiques. They're things that people used all the time in making their day-to-day -day lives. The bed was slept in. The piano was played. The table was eaten at. The Rody House and the times it represents are part of the heritage of all people of Vancouver. For surviving members of the Rody family, though, the house is also part of their personal heritage. It has yes, special we're just meaning. Meet you in the garden. Visits to the house are chances to look not just at Vancouver's history, but also to look at their own family history. Same entry hall, isn't it? Yeah, and we've got our lights back. Kay Haw and Gwen Varco are the granddaughters of Gustav and Matilda Rohde. Right in the corner. More than 70 years ago, when they were little girls, their father went away to World War I, and Kay and Gwen and their mother came to stay here with Gustav and Matilda, their grandparents. Well, it's hard to remember how t how high the ceilings were because I do not know how grandmother coped with those ceilings hanging curtains. It's bad enough having to wash and put them on the racks to dry. Well, this door of course wasn't even wasn't it? it seems to me it was closed most oh of the time. yes it was closed all the time we didn't go in there unless we were invited yeah which wasn't too often except i got in there to practice well there's wonder who did the painting of grandfather i think that's one andy madeline resurrected for kay and gwen the house is alive with memories memories of playing in many of the places that visitors walk through Memories of using many of the things that are in the house today. Memories of the people that lived and visited here and of what life was like in Vancouver in 1916 when their father was away at the war. But it seemed, and it wasn't there, it was sort of out, because I thought it was out, but it was still, I could get in when I came home, if there were people sitting there, you could I could come them. in the kaboof and take put the my off or gum boots. gum boots there. The kitchen was always a special place for Kay and Gwen. It was the center of family life for them. Gustav and two or three of his employees ate lunch here every day. For the little girls, it was a chance to listen and learn about the affairs of the world outside. 
Once or twice a week, the girls would be greeted on their return home from school by the rich aroma of their grandma's baking. They'd sit on the still warm oven door and munch oven fresh treats. The coffee grinder is here, and we used to, you, you and I used to have the job of in grinding the it in the, yeah, in the well, pantry. This, it, it seems strangely small to me. And of course, I was a lot smaller then. I guess that has something to do with it. The stove's not in the right place. No, it was over here. I presume this was left over from the gas lighting. I remember it as being along the wall there, but they didn't use it in our time. So, because I remember uh, Grandma's heat, uh, that warmer at the top of the stove where she kept her yeah. toasted buns. Mm -hmm. They were good. Well, it is the same stove, I believe. Same type, you mean. Well, it might even be the same stove. It wasn't. It, it, I don't think it's been used for a long time. You want to try sitting on the oven door? No. Uh, I sure break it now. But these things, I remember those items particularly because they had a magic way of you pull up that thing in the center, I believe, and then it locks in. And then they sat on a trivet on the ironing board. Yeah. In many ways, life for the two little girls was similar to life for children today. They went to school, played and explored outside, spent time with their family. But in many ways, their lives were also very different. And visitors to the house who look closely can see how. There's no television, no radio, no washing machine, no dishwasher, no dryer, and very few of the normal appliances that we use to make our lives easier. When Kay and Gwen lived here, all the clothes were washed by hand. The stoves and fireplaces had to be stoked to cook on. Life was a lot more work. Because there was no radio, it was a different kind of world. And uh, even the newspapers were sold on the street. I can remember newsboys coming down when there was anything exciting um, in the news and say, extra, extra. And that's how you were alerted to the fact that there was a newspaper out. And you would go out and give them 10 cents and buy the newspaper. We would often be sent out to buy a newspaper. And this is where the telephone was, as I remember. Don't you think it was? I know we could hear the drill from the trip. Oh, the yes, the little, the little grating yeah, into the upstairs hall was gone. Close the door. That's easier said than done, dear. Oh, turn the handle. It's, it's, it's. There we are. Well. In spite of the fact that in those days life was a lot more work than it is today, there were many rewards, too. Family life was rich and full and provided a great deal of happiness for the little girls. Well, security, I think. It was the, the home and the kitchen that appealed to me. You know, the grandmother was always there. And, uh, and of course, I guess mother was too, but she was probably busy sewing. But I just remember that, that there was the security of grandmother and the baking and the smell of this lovely food, this great food. I guess it's the security, isn't it? I know I was set down to practice at the piano, and I used to hate it. And I once said to Mother, you know, Mother, if you would give me five cents every time I practiced half an hour, I would do it every day. Isn't that an awful thing to remember? Of course, five cents meant something, about the same as a dollar, I think. That meant a nice cream cone. Yeah. But not at West Coast. We couldn't get ice cream. And I remember going to Miss Towers, who was my music teacher, and Granda would give me a Lowney's chocolate bar and also one for Miss Towersy, which I I don't know why, but I think of it going up to Miss Towersy. She lived on Georgia Street and up near 
where is it? Near Burrard, I think it was, between Thurlow and Burrard, on the north side of the street, and she had a room there with a the piano. And by the time I got there with my two chocolate, well, I only had one because I'd eaten one on the way, and I have had, I would pass this to Miss Towersy, who was a dear old lady, a, Pers a Polish lady, and she would say, well, dear, I don't eat much chocolate, you have it. Would you like it? <laughs> well, I like it. I shouldn't be. Oh, that was a great suggestion. The West End was very familiar to us. It's old, I, I've been there long enough that, that old Black Joe taught our mother to swim. Yes. And um, he had a little shack in that little park that's there. He lived there. I suppose he was a squatter too, I don't know. Well, I can remember, we used to, I used to go downtown with mother I used to hate it. She'd step in every, every window to look in. But we always knew people when we went down to, I guess it was uh, Georgia and Granville and Burks and Hudson Bay, and we would mall around there. Probably I was, there was, she was trying to get some shoes to fit me because I have very skinny feet. And uh, she always had friends. There was always somebody you knew. You know, now it's just a big mass of people. Vancouver is a young city. It's a city of immigrants. We are all, apart from the First Nations people, newcomers here. We or our parents or grandparents have all come here from elsewhere. With us, we bring customs and traditions. Each family brings its own personal heritage. For Kay and Gwen, and their own daughters, Catherine and Kathleen, the house is a direct link back to the heritage brought to Canada by Gustav and Matilda Rohde, and to the lives they made here. Visits to the house are time to pass on that heritage, to keep it from being forgotten, so that each new generation can know where they came from. But the house is also part of the heritage of all the people who live in Vancouver because the city we live in draws from the heritages of all those who have come here. It's a way of collecting those heritages, of sharing them with the others who live around us. That's what a community is. Like a family photograph meant for all of us, the Rody House is a reminder of how our entire community once lived, of where we came from. It's like a window that we can all look through, a window to our past.